Hello everyone and welcome to another Modswell video. I've just hit 7,000 subs and I couldn't have done it without all of you because that's just how numbers work. But seriously, thank you all so much for following me. AE has just rolled out an update that hopefully has fixed all the bugs you're having and now we can get on with playing our favourite mod simulator, Skyrim. With that in mind, I'll be going over my top 5 mods of the week, right now. First up we have a kind of fun little mod for mages or people playing in the Dragonborn DLC wearable black books. Simply put, this mod is going to add in some new items to static locations in the game and you won't be surprised to hear those items are black books that you can wear. There are actually a few versions of this so I will explain the difference. First up is the unenchanted version which is just a nice decorative piece to wear on your hip or hold in your hand. You can of course enchant this however you deem fit. However, there is also an enchanted version which is going to lower spell costs in all schools of magic by 33%. This is going to be extremely handy for any mage style build. And as it occupies slot 55, when on the hip and 58 in the hand it can be worn alongside a whole host of other armour pieces. Every single bit of extra power you can eke in your build can be crucial, especially when you're using extra difficulty mods. And being a mage can be tough because resource management is pivotal in every single fight. Less so for a spell sword, but Magicka is your lifeblood. Without it, you become a walking bag of bones easily picked off by even the most basic of bandits. So with that in mind, the reduction in spell cost across the board is going to come in extremely handy almost constantly. So to get your hands on these and assist your play, all you'll need to do is head over to the abandoned house in Ravenrock. You'll find them in a satchel upstairs. As a side note, if you happen to be a mage, you can also download mods like Wearable Spell Tomes. It's an extremely similar mod, however, these books look way cooler because of their vanilla design, especially if you're going to be a nefarious mage. Wearable Black Books will only cost you 108.7 kilobytes too, so it is very easy to slot in. Personally, I've thrown this into unique items added to interior slash exterior locations for my logical load order placement, and it has worked well so far. Moving on to my fourth place mod. Here I've gone for restoring the Aretino Residence SE. This is a really cool play on a house mod. Once you've finished a few Dark Brotherhood missions to clear the Aretino boy out from your house, the quest can begin. Enter the house and speak to Angrigor, who will hang out there in the daytime. There are 12 new quests to finish. Each one equates to an upgrade in the house. These range from kitchen decorations, entry clutter, wall displays, a dining room, living room, multiple bedrooms, a library, an armory, and the all-important alchemy lab. The house itself is fully prepared for adoptions and families moving in, with more than enough space to fit them. There's actually been quite an expansion on the vanilla house. Well, that's what it looks like to me. When your family has finally moved in, you'll find Angregor acts like a helper, cooking and cleaning for them. And icing on the cake is he's a fully voiced character. Often this is a lacking aspect of mods like this, but I'm really happy to report that that simply isn't the case here. There really isn't much more to say. This is a great player home with a fun creation based idea, mini quests and a decent AI helper to boot. And as it only costs 3.6 megabytes, it's pretty inexpensive too. I've slotted this into new quest mods low down in my order to try and fend off any potential conflicts. So far, so good. Let's move on to the number 3 spot and the first of two armor mods. Here we have Christie's Summoner Outfit. This mod is based off of a Final Fantasy Summoner's gear and personally, I think that shows a ton. Extremely decorative clothing with a ton of extra accessories hanging off of it. Classic Final Fantasy style. This is a male and female armor that would suit a lighter playstyle or character. Naturally, a mage would be the right fit. And with that in mind, a staff has also been added to the pack. Be aware though, you will have to craft the staff and enchant it separately. As for the armor, this comes in multiple pieces. Body armor, a waist guard, shoes and a helmet which is tagged as a circlet so your hair will remain on display. Be warned though, this can have some clipping. The outfit itself is craftable at the tanning rack so you will likely be able to deck yourself out with this pretty early on. One thing I'm particularly appreciative about this set is how the male and female clothing doesn't differ more than shape. Often I'm left questioning the decision made for the full protective male set when the female turns into some sort of skimpy, barely covering anything or protective outfit at all. Here, this is not a problem at all though, which means I can transfer it around saves without it being wasted space. This mod comes in three standards too. The 1K for 38.6 megabytes, 
the 2K is 51.7 megabytes, and finally the 4K, which is available for 114.1 megabytes. I'll likely be going for the 1K as it looks great and it fits in easier. I've slotted this one into pure craftables in the logical load order. Moving on to the number two slot. Here we have another armor, but this time it's a replacer. Here we have Daedric Armor SE. I've been looking at this armor all week. I'm legitimately so impressed with the design, based more on the Morrowind Daedra sets, but with extremely upgraded textures. The body armor is more cut and plated style, large shoulder pieces, but more fitting to the body than the vanilla ones. A small crimson glowing skirt, full face mask style helmet with horns and an almost Asian design style. This retexture has a lot going for it. I'd argue this is one of the coolest looking sets on the Bethnet, retexture or otherwise. But not content with just creating some of the coolest armors available, 4th Unknown also decided to change a few weapons to match this new style. The sword in both one and two handed as well as the dagger have been updated too. Longer both in blade and hilt with a more decorative style and crimson accents perfectly suiting the new armors. I've avoided using the Daedric gear for a while now because it just wasn't my style, but this massively is, so I guess I'll just have to reevaluate my views. Once again, this mod comes in three variants. 1K is a tiny 13.1 megabytes, 2K is only gonna cost you 19.2 megabytes, and 4K is a superbly reasonable 46.7 megabytes. I personally will be going with the 2K, but honestly, the 1K quality is still great and the 4K is still affordable, so that's fantastic work there. Simply slot this one in with your other weapon and armor retextures. In my LLO, there is a section for that at the bottom. In the more traditional LLO, these would go in the general meshes and textures section. Finally, it's time for my top mod of the week, and this is a big one too. Here we have Dark Lore Grimmer version 3.2. This mod is performing a huge amount of tasks. First of all, we have edits to the world space. Most notably, Solitude has become the second seat of magical power with its own guild dedicated to the arcane arts. The original college has also taken some changes, mostly around the tower. So right out of the gate, be aware of potential conflicts that change the same areas. There's also been a rework to the magical system. Now all vanilla spells will be learned at the requisite level in their schools of magic. So, training yourself with alteration will begin to unlock more spells in that school, and so on. Spells also get upgraded as you dive deeper into your knowledge of the magic. Fortunately, none of this alters the vanilla spells to keep it compatible with spell edits such as Odin and Mysticism. This mod contains a ton, so I'll do a brief rundown. We get 54 new quests, 235 new and unique NPCs including enemy characters who are equipped with the upgraded DLG spells, 1,215 brand new lines of dialogue, College of Winterhold updates, new factions such as the Black Worm, House Telvani, and the Solitude Mages Guild, new skill-based learning when it comes to vanilla spells, and a brand new spell upgrade system to get even more out of the magics you've already learned. Genuinely, this is a crazy mod and should be used as the building blocks of an order, but with changes like these, you will have to be aware that conflicts can happen or that your game is just loading in too much and giving up. So far, I've avoided issues by keeping the main edited spots of the College and Solitude pretty clear of any other edits. I also don't have many extra NPCs loaded into my game as it currently stands, so this is also helping a bunch with performance. But if anyone needs a hand with this mod, please don't hesitate to ask. Onto the more business side though. This mod is going to set you back 144.6 megabytes, so it is fairly large overall, especially for a kind of unfinished mod. There may also be some small bugs here and there when it comes to rainbow faces. If you do come across those, share that in the comments section and I'll be sure to pass on the information and hopefully we can get it sorted out. In terms of placement, I suggest putting this one low down. I have it in my new quest mods to be sure it runs correctly. On that however, I am going to call it. As always, I have left links for all of the mods on both Xbox and PC. I have also left a link to my Discord and the Skyrim Xbox Mod subreddit as they're helpful communities for anyone getting into or just needing a hand with modding. I have also left a link to my Buy Me A Coffee account, which is like a small donations page for anyone who wishes to help that way. To help grow the channel, I would really appreciate those likes, comments, and of course subscriptions. They push the work out further with YouTube's algorithm. But either way, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.